Good morning, you guys. So I'm going to finish up with problem 40 on inverse Laplace transforms. And unless you guys protest, it's going to be my very last one because I really, really hate doing these um, the, by using algebra because it's so easy to make mistakes when you're taking double derivatives and because um, I'm going to be posting some stuff from chapter 13, circuit analysis using um, Laplace transforms. And so by solving those problems, I will unfortunately have to do this stuff anyway, so you'll get it from the other problems. Um, but I'm, not, I'm going to teach you guys the shortcuts and the patterns here in this video. And in the future, moving forward, I'm just going to do them. I'm not going to like break down the algebra or anything like I will here. So let's cut to the um, cut to the chase. The first thing you have to do in finding things in um, the frequency domain or the time domain, or is you have to do partial fraction expansion. And even though, like I said before, most teachers won't test you in linear algebra, they will almost always test you on your knowledge of doing partial fraction expansion. Even though your calculator will do it and MATLAB will do it, they for whatever reason, feel that this is a fundamental skill that you have to have, is knowing how to do partial fraction expansion and then uh, finding it on the table and then um, translating the frequency domain in back into the time domain. So I need to show you that because you'll be tested on that. So this is a really easy one because the denominator is all real roots. Um, it's a pain in the, in the neck when you get into complex roots, but this one's not too bad. This is just, just factors in two. So 24 has uh, 2, 12, uh, 2 times 12, and it's also 6 times 4. So 6 and 4 is what makes 10. So this is the same thing as, as uh, s plus 6 and s plus 4, right? So if you FOIL that, you'll get exactly s plus uh, 10, x squared plus 10s plus 24. So I'm going to replace that with s plus 6 and s plus 4. So partial fraction expansion says that once you break it down into its components, well not, not just its components, but whatever the things that are being multiplied together can be each broken out as a sum of fractions. So partial fraction extension said that is exactly identical to some number over s plus some number over s plus 2 plus some number over s plus 6 plus some number over s plus 4. Um, so we need to find those numbers and the way the pattern that I want you guys to get in the habit of solving this is that you're always, you can look at this and immediately know what A is. It's A is going to be the numerator, right? 13 S squared plus 134 S, oops, S cubed, S squared plus 392 S plus 288. That's going to be over everything else that's not S. So you take, you take away, so the, the S that's in A already, so the denominator is everything else, except for whatever it is that you're looking for. So A has the S, so we're going to fill it in with everything else. So S plus two, S plus six, S plus four, and then you evaluate that at wherever, at wherever the denominator is zero. So in this case, that's gonna happen at s equals zero, right? Get in the habit of doing that because you don't, I'm gonna show you the algebra only for a, and then the rest of the way, we're going to do it the shortcut way. So when s is zero, this term is zero, this term is zero, 392s is zero, we have 288. And that's gonna be times two plus six, so six times two times four. So that means A will be six. So we found A, A is six. Now, 
let's find B the long way. And then C and D, we're going to do it the shortcut way. I wanted to show you the shortcut way first because if you, uh, if you didn't feel like watching the rest of the video, or if you have a teacher that doesn't care if you know how to do it by longhand, then you know the shortcut way. So, my, um, so what you want to do is, I actually don't have enough room, so let's go 6 over S plus B over S plus 2 plus C over S plus 6 plus D over S plus 4. Okay. So now we're going to say this F of S, holy smokes, I don't have room. So we're going to say F of S, 13S cubed plus 134S squared plus 392S plus 288. That's all over S times S plus 2, S plus 6, S plus 4 is equal to A over S plus B over S plus 2 plus C over S plus 6 plus D over S plus 4. We want to solve for B. That means we need to get rid of the s plus 2 so that we have so that it's just b so this is s times the whole equation by s plus 2 well if we multiply s plus 2 over here then that s plus 2 will cancel with that s plus 2 so in the denominator we will only be left with s times s plus 6 times s plus 4 that's why in the shortcut that is the reason why in the shortcut when you look at it and you say this it is equal to this, you don't include that because the method of partial fraction expansion will automatically cause that to cancel out. So it's um, the, new, the denominator will be all the other roots except for the root that you're looking for. That's the reason. In the numerator, you have the same thing. 13s cubed plus 134s squared plus 392s plus 288. And that's equal to, well, A times S plus 2, that's over S, plus B over, uh, well, S plus 2 times, we did that for reasons so that we could isolate B, right? Plus C times S plus 2 over S plus 6, plus D times S plus 2 over S plus so the right side of the equation looks pretty ugly, but and, and it is, but the reason that it's not going to be ugly very soon is because this is an equation and we can evaluate it at any point we feel like it. And we're just going to be clever and take it where s plus 2 is equal to 0, right? So set the denominator to 0, that 0 at s is equal to negative 2. Why did we do that? Because we're clever. And negative 2 plus 2 means this is 0, right? If that's 0, then this whole term goes to 0. S plus 2 is 0. This whole term goes to 0. And that whole term goes to 0. Which means, by being clever, I made that go away. And I made that go away. And I made that go away. And I'm just left with B, right? So B is equal to this whole all of this evaluated at s is equal to negative 2. So that's why the shortcut when you have real roots is, um, and even if you have complex roots, the method is the same. You evaluate, you, you, uh, the denominator will be all the other roots except for the root of the variable that you're looking for, and you evaluate it at whatever makes that denominator go to 0. So, Therefore, this is equal to 13 times negative 2 cubed plus 134 
times negative 2 squared plus 392 times negative 2 plus 288. All that's over negative 2 times negative 2 plus 6 times negative 2 plus 4. I did the math already, and when you do that, you will find that B is equal to 4. Now, that is the only time that I'm going to do that heinous algebra because um, I really hate doing it. That's what MATLAB and a calculator is for. So now you know the method for the shortcut. We're just going to do the shortcut for the rest of the problem. So what did we say was a shortcut? C is going to be the numerator, right? 13 s cubed plus 134 s squared plus 392 s plus 288. That's over all the other roots. That's not C. So everything except for that. So that's going to be this s, s plus 2, and s plus 4. And evaluate it at the point that makes the zero denominator. So that's going to be evaluated at s is equal to negative 6. Put that into your calculator, and you will find that s is c is equal to negative 6. So now, same thing with part E. The denominator is the same. The root, oh, excuse me, the numerator is the same. The denominator will be everything except for the denominator of D. So that's going to be S, S plus 2, S plus 6. And evaluate it at whatever makes the denominator for d zero, and that will be at s is equal to negative four. Do that, and you will find that d is two. So, at this point, write down on your cheat sheet that the shortcut is expand the denominator. And partial fraction expansion means that there are each component of the denominator has a corresponding numerator that we can find and it would be the sum of the sum of um, the denominator the roots of the denominator with some some uh, co some numerator that we can find so um, then each of the numerators can be found by setting it equal to the numerator over the denominator less whatever new whatever denominator that you're looking for and evaluate that at whatever makes the denominator zero so i know i totally botched the wording of that but you get the idea you saw what i did and you saw why that works put it in your own words and do it until it becomes habit and obvious um, so, because you don't want to do it the way that I did for number B. And that was a real pain in the neck. So now we have everything expanded in terms of, um, of partial fraction expansion. We have it as four fractions that we can find a mapping, a time domain mapping for. The table in chapter 12 shows you a... Um, the pair or what each of these map to. So I already looked at it. One over S, so six times one over S is six U of T. So this one is a really basic one, the one over S plus A. So I just know that one happens to be E over negative two T. This is, they're all of the form one over S plus A. So this is gonna be negative six E to the negative six T plus two e to the negative 4t, and everything is multiplied by u of t, so you can factor out a u of t, but all the u of t does is it defines the function for time greater than zero, 
So that's equivalent to multiplying everything by u of t. Well, that is problem 1240, and I don't ever want to do a lo an inverse Laplace transform problem again. But as it turns out, I'll be doing a lot of them. So that's it.